Some days, everything is great. You wake up and enjoy your favourite breakfast. You arrive at school and the teacher loves your work. You're unbeatable in the playground games. Some days, everything is great. Some days, everything is terrible. Your toast burns. You're late to school and the dog ate your homework. And even if the teacher didn't keep you in, no friends want to play with you. Some days, everything is terrible, horrible, no good, and very bad. Whatever the day, the Lord's love never fails. The Bible says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord's love never fails. His compassion is new on the great mornings. We easily remember his great love on great days when the sun shines, we're having fun and everything is going our way. His compassion is new on those great days. The Lord's love never fails. His compassion is new every morning. His compassion is also new on the terrible days. The Bible said, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail, when enemy armies surrounded them. The Bible said, They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness, when there was no food to eat and no hope of escape. Even in the darkest places, the Lord's love never fails. Even on the hardest days, God's compassion is new every morning. The cross of Jesus was the darkest day. The daytime sky went black as Jesus died. On the darkest day, we see the Lord's love not failing. He was loving us. Jesus was dying for our sins so we could live forever with him. On the morning of the darkest day, God's compassion was new for everyone who trusts him. The Lord's love never fails. Some days will be great. On great days, we easily remember the Lord's unfailing love is new every morning. Some days will be terrible. On terrible days, we must remember the Lord's unfailing love is new every morning. Whatever the day, the Lord's love never fails. Good morning, I'm Indy and first of all I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person to share this message. Um, but nevertheless, looking forward to, to speaking with you uh, and sharing some things that God's put on my heart for you this morning. Um, so without uh, further ado, I just want to turn to the book of Galatians, to uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. What I am saying is that as long as heirs are underage, they are no different from slaves, although they own the whole estate. They are subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by their fathers. So also, when we were underage, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. 
But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slaves, but God's children. And since you are his children, he has made you also heirs. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, I thank you that wherever we are this morning, um, listening to this online, listening to this at Springwater, or even now myself giving it, I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would be with us, that you would uh, lead us and teach us and guide us. Lord, we thank you that you cry, Abba, Father, within us. Holy Spirit, will you meet with us and teach us this morning? Amen. I have um, family in Newfoundland, in Canada. My grandmother was from there. Um, and when I was about 18, I was fortunate enough to go over and visit. We've not had a lot of opportunity to go there. Um, and Newfoundland is a little bit different to the UK in that it's quite a lot colder. Um, and perhaps on a day that's quite as hot as this one, um, which I'm assuming the forecast has said it's going to be very hot uh, when you're hearing this on Sunday morning. On a day that's, that's this hot, perhaps it's either perhaps refreshing to think of somewhere cold or, or perhaps um, uh, inspires some envy. I don't, I don't know. But... In Newfoundland, it's particularly cold. It's a little island just off the edge of Canada, really close to the Arctic. You get icebergs kind of going through um, in, in, the, in the, well, all, all through the year, really. And while I was there, I was bought a T-shirt by my aunt. And on that uh, T-shirt, it said the phrase, onward through the fog. Onward through the fog. Because in Newfoundland, there is a lot of fog. It rolls in off the sea, um, and you get it on land and, and there's a lot of fishing boats and they're often out there in the sea trying to navigate this fog. Um, and so they have this phrase, onward through the fog. And so she gave it to me as a bit of a, a, a spiritual, prophetic uh, sort of guide, uh, really. And actually that phrase has stuck with me uh, for, for many years. And, I, and I'm sort of thinking about um, where we're at at the minute and... Uh, and, and, and in this passage as well, that the phrase on with through the fog kind of comes to mind a bit. It talks of a time in this passage where we weren't fully um, heirs. We weren't fully complete in the things that God has for us. But now we're in a place where that is complete. And, and in our nation, we're, we're in a place where things aren't fully where we want them to be. We can see that there's good things coming. We know that vaccinations have put COVID um, on the back foot, but at the same time, infections are increasing. It's an interesting, complicated place where there's a fair amount of uncertainty and perhaps it can feel a little bit like there's fog in our future. We know that there's good things coming. We know that there's a good journey, uh, but there's some fog right now. Perhaps you, you can think of times in your life or people you know or... Perhaps you're in that space right now where there's uncertainty, there's fog on the journey. And perhaps you're, there's a call for you to go onward through the fog and not just sit or, or, or not be able to get to the end until you've gone through it. But how do we do that? How do we go through the fog? How do we trust the things that God is calling us to, the promises he's put in front of us, that promise end? How do we trust and go through that place of uncertainty where we cannot see more than a few feet in front of us. And I want to jump uh, to the story of uh, Jacob at Bethel. So I'm just going to read from Genesis uh, chapter 28 verses 16 uh, to the end and then uh, again in chapter 35. And Jacob has just had a dream at Bethel, a dream of angels ascending and descending on a stairway to heaven. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. 
When Jacob, then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. And then we go to uh, chapter 35, where Jacob returns to Bethel safely. It says it in verse 9. After Jacob returned from Paddan Amram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you and kings will come from your body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also gave to you. And I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him. Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him. And he poured out a drink offering on it. And also he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the place where God had talked with him Bethel. So we see in this passage that Jacob is on a journey. He starts with a dream from God, a promise that God is with him. And he says, God, if you'll be with me, I'll worship you at this place. And sure enough, Jacob goes out makes the journey successfully, comes back and returns to Bethel. And again, um, he worships God at that place. God gives him a new name, calls him Israel, a new identity. And they set up a pillar and worship God at this place. And so when we're going out on a journey that we're not quite sure of how we're going to get there, we're not quite sure of those, those few steps in front of us, one thing we can do is look back to those places where God has helped us in the past those pillars where we've set up, those places where God shaped our identity by doing work within us. It may have been answered prayer, it may have been provision, it may have been experiences we've had of God. These places can be pivotal in, in helping us get through uh, the next journey he calls us to, reminding us that God is a provider, God is faithful, God will bless us wherever we go. And so it becomes really important to speak of the things that God is doing amongst us in a time like this. It becomes really important to share the stories of what God's done in our past, but also what God's doing now. Not just for our journey, but for those around us. Because sometimes it's not, um, not our pillars that we're looking back at, not our memories, but it's other people's memories that can remind us. Actually, God can help them. He can help us too. So I encourage you to share the good things that God is doing amongst you uh, today and, and going forward to, to share the good things because they can be those, those marker points to help us get through the, the fog to the next stage. Another thing is to remember our identity. As we read in Galatians, we are not in a halfway house as people anymore. We are now sons and daughters of God. We have a new identity, a new name. We are his children. We are part of his kingdom. And with that, we have something really special. We have the Holy Spirit within us who cries out, Abba, Father. We can remember what God has called us, the new names he's given us. And we can see the evidence of him within us with the Holy Spirit. And the third thing that I want to bring to you today is a thing of worship. When we worship God, we can bring all of these things together. Sometimes a worship song is a pillar. It is um, a sign of all the things that have happened in the, in the past, the times when God has done things for other people and they've cried out in worship and praise to him and written a song about it. So sometimes worship can be really helpful from that point of view. Another thing it can do is it can help remind us of that identity that God has given us by speaking truths of who God is and who we are. And thirdly, it gives us this special thing of calling Abba Father within us. In the Galatians passage, it says, in verse 6, it says, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out Abba Father. When we worship God, it's not just coming from our hearts. It is coming from us, but it's also coming from the Spirit within us. When we worship Him, we connect with that identity, that promise of who we are in God. 
So I want to encourage you this morning um, to, to press on, to go on through the fog, wherever the uncertainty is, um, and to do so by worshipping God and by remembering the good things he's done in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Because our identity is in him, we are his children, and he does not abandon us. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday morning. I'm just going to pray for us now and then let you get on with the rest of your time in worship together. Lord, I thank you that you don't abandon us when things are uncertain. You don't abandon us when we are not quite sure of the path ahead. But Lord God, you call us to worship. You call us to remember. You call us to remember those times that you are with us in, in storms, in difficult places, in deserts, um, and in the middle of the fog. You are there. So Lord, call to mind for each of us today those times when you have done that. We thank you, Father. Amen.